Welcome to this video on selection bias and its subtypes. This video is a part of our series on epidemiology and biostats. My name is Dr. Wahab Fazal and let us get into it now. So what is selection bias? Selection bias is when the sample that you choose from a population does not represent it. So what does that mean? So let's take a sample, let's take an example of a hypothesis. Let's say this is the continent of Asia. You hypothesize that the people, that the continent of Asia, the people that live in the Asian people are super, super smart, right? You make that uh, hypothesis. How do you prove that? You can't just say things in a scientific word and accept and uh, expect people to accept it, right? So you want to study that hypothesis. You want to test that hypothesis. How do you do that? Well, you choose a group of people and you see if they're smart or not. So how do you do that? Can you take the entire continent of Asia and make that conclusion? Well, no, you have to choose a small group of people and that will be your sample. Now this sample, in fact, has to include people from all over Asia, right? If, it's, if that's not true, if you, choose, if you choose sample from a very small group of people in a particular academy who are really, really smart, you're introducing selection bias. Why? Because that sample does not represent the entire continent of Asia. If you're making a conclusion about Asian people, you have to make sure that your, your sample somehow represents the entire continent of Asia and their people. So selection bias is when that sample does not represent the population. And this is not at any specific point. As the word says, you know, I had this mis misconception when I was a student that selection bias happens only when you're selecting your sample, right? Only when you're going to choose which sample is going to be. But that's not true. This can happen at any point during the study. This can happen at any point during the study. And that's what we're going to talk about when we talk about selection bias and its subtypes. So when we talk about its subtypes, I want you to know the, these six major subtypes, right? I'm not going to name each one of these right now. So how about we talk about these three first and why I'm going to start with these three first is when these happen when you are choosing your sample. These happen when you are choosing your sample. So first of all, sampling bias. Let's talk about sampling bias with the help of a very interesting example. So you measure the average height of an adult man in your city. You want to measure the average height of an adult man in your city. Now that night, you happen to have tickets to a basketball game. You have tickets to a basketball game. You go to that basketball game and you measure, an ev you measure every basketballer in that game. Now what happens is that you conclude that the average height of a man in your city is 6'2". Is this true? No, it's not true. Why? Because it's, this sample does not represent your population. The population of city, not an average person becomes a basketballer. To be a basketballer, you have to have certain traits. That's why this sample does not represent your population. This is a sampling bias. And the next two biases that I'm, talk, uh, the, that I'm going to talk about are also, you can maybe consider them to be a very specific type of sampling bias. So how do you solve sampling bias? You make sure that your sample is random. What does that mean? You make sure that you choose people at random from the city and you make sure that this represents the entire population of that particular city. So that's how you reduce sampling bias. Now Bergson bias, how I think of Bergson bias is a very specific type of sampling bias. Sampling bias, when you choose people from a hospital, is basically called Bergson bias. That's how I remember Bergson bias. When you choose people from a hospital in your study, that's called Bergson bias. Let's take an example. You want to study the correlation between depression and coffee consumption. You choose your sample from hospital patients. Why is that wrong? You're, you're, you're making a hypothesis that applies to the general population. You want to see the correlation between depression and coffee consumption. You did not write in hospital patients. Why did you choose hospital patients? It's like, it's like measuring the height in a basketball team. It's the same kind of conundrum. You're, you're trying to study depression in hospital patients. Now, what happens to be the case is that a lot of hospital patients may be depressed due to a plethora of other reasons, due to plenty of other reasons. They have comorbidities, the fact that the hospitals are just sometimes not very happy places or most of the times not very happy places. Therefore, you can't choose your sample from hospital patients. And then you erroneously conclude that there's a strong correlation. Why is this false? Well, don't choose your uh, don't choose your sample from a hospital if your hypothesis applies to the general population. If you're trying to study something, you know, depression in the ICU, then maybe you can take patients from the ICU. But if you're trying to say, if you're trying to study the correlation between uh, depression and coffee consumption, you can't do that in a hospital. 
Therefore, what's the solution to this? Don't pick people from a hospital if you want to do a study that applies to the general population. So how I remember this is with the simple, this thing in my brain that I just remember Berkson General Hospital. Now, there's a very good hospital in Boston called the Massachusetts General Hospital or MGH. So I remember it as Boston General or Berkson General. Instead of that, just remember Berkson General Hospital and you'll remember that Berkson bias occurs when you choose people from a hospital. So let's talk about healthy worker effect. Now healthy worker effect, I also consider healthy worker effect to be a very specific kind of sampling bias that, that happens when you choose very fit people. That happens when you choose the healthy worker, the construction worker or the fit person. Let's understand that with the help of an example. What's healthy worker effect? Well, you want to study the life expectancy of the general population. Again, the general population. You choose your sample from construction workers. You conclude that an average citizen has a long life. You conclude, now why is this false? Why is this false? It is false because to be a construction worker, you have to meet a certain set of requirements. You have to be a very fit person. You have to be a physically, uh, you have to be in your prim condition to be a construction worker in the first place. Therefore, the odds of you living long are very good because you're the healthy worker. That's why I choose this construction worker because I wanted you to remember construction workers and the healthy worker effect. So that that is, so how, you rem how I remember both healthy worker effect and Bergson bias as very specific type of sampling bias when they deal with very fit people or athletes. For example, you want to study the muscle mass of an average person and then you go and measure the muscle mass of an athlete or, or a team of athletes and then, then you conclude that the average person has a very high muscle mass. That is the healthy, healthy worker effect. The same goes if you choose people from a hospital, that's Bergson bias. So healthy worker effect is when you uh, take a very small group of very healthy and fit people and then you apply that conclusion to the general population. Simple as that. That's the healthy worker effect. What is the solution? Well, you again, again, it's just as the sampling bias. Make sure your sample is random and represents the entire population, not just construction workers, not just um, a team of very fit athletes. You have to make sure that your, your uh, sample represents the entire population. So what's the solution to all of these? Sampling bias, pick randomly. Bergson bias, Bergson General Hospital, just don't pick from a hospital. Healthy worker effect, fit people aren't always the right fit because they just might have a lot of other things going on that might not make them a great fit for your study. Again, let us go back to our subtypes. So we already did three of these. You're, you're already done with three of these. I'm gonna make these as simple that you're gonna say this is the easiest topic of them all. So what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's something that makes all of these things similar? They all occur during the selection phase, right? They all occur during the selection phase. Selection bias, on the other hand, can occur at every point during the study. They, this is the point at which the next two biases that we're gonna study about become relevant. The next two biases that we're gonna study about become relevant, the non-response bias and the attrition bias. So let us talk about attrition bias. What is attrition bias? Migration or attrition bias. So the word attrition means reduction in numbers. For the purposes of your exam, attrition means reduction in numbers. Meaning people left the study. Just that. People have left the study. Selection bias does not necessarily just occur when you're selecting people from the study. You've already selected people from the study. Your sample was great. But suddenly people left. People left. And now, now that sample, for example, your, your sample was... Uh, of all the apples in your city and suddenly you have lost all the red apples. You've lost all the red apples. So now that's, uh, if, you, if you want to make the conclusion about all kinds of apple, your apple population does not have any red apples. You lost people in the study and now the sample is not representative. And that's why I put this sad, sad face here because you did a great job choosing that sample. It's just that people left or people died during the study and now the sample does not represent the entire population. That is migration or attrition bias. A teacher wants to study a new method of teaching maths. So th this is an example. She takes 30 students. 10 students leave the study because they find the method too difficult, right? The remaining students score extremely well. The teacher concludes that the new method is better. Why is this wrong? This is wrong because the people that have left the study, they also represent your general population of students, right? 
they also there might be some people who are not as motivated in the general population there might be some student who are not let's say as smart or who don't have an aptitude great in maths so you can't make the conclusion that the new method is better for everyone because clearly 10 10 students left the 20 were maybe a great fit for this particular method or the 20 uh, for were the 20 were really motivated or really smart so you can't make this conclusion for everyone because the people that you took in the start left the study too many people left the study for you to be making this conclusion this is migration or attrition bias the next type of bias is actually very very similar how you think of non response bias is when you th- so i want you to think of surveys think of surveys so what happens with surveys is whenever somebody gives you a survey you're like oh yes yes definitely i will fill this survey and you don't right you don't fill the surveys or if somebody on calls uh, wants you to fill a survey like sir ma'am i want you to fill this survey you're like yes and you then you turn off the call right that's what you do so what happens with surveys is that a lot of people don't fill the form and very few people do what ends up happening is that the very few people who fill the form cause this to be a selection bias now the people who have filled the form this is in a disproportionate manner let's take an for example if we take uh, our previous example of let's say asian people uh, if a very particular subset of asian people fills the form and most of the asian people do not fill the form because they just let's say do not have uh, internet devices or they just don't have mobile phones or computer applications or whatever and a very small subset of uh, people fill that form now that form only represents those people and does not represent the entire population so this is non response bias and this is uh, so it's kind of similar to attrition bias but it's really not non response bias think surveys and people not responding most people don't respond to surveys this causes the results not to be representative of the general population let's take an example you want to do a survey for average number of hours a medical students spend studying only 10 out of 500 people in your medical college fill the form these 10 people had happen to be toppers or these 10 people happen to the people uh, happen to be the people who are currently studying for their let's say usmle exams what happens what happens now that that result is not now representative of the general population how do you treat attrition or migration bias people left now sample is different and there is nothing you can do about it at this point non response bias people did not respond to surveys and the very few people who did caused the result to be very very different than the general population caused the result to be skewed okay so let us take a look at our selection bias chart again so these were our three that i did in the start and what was similar between all three of them was they were during the choosing phase sampling bias for the general thing uh berkson was the berkson general hospital and healthy workers are generally not always the right fit for the general population then we study about these attrition or migration people left non response people don't respond to surveys and what was and then finally we have neiman but what we, what is common between non response and attrition bias right they happen during the study duration so the selection bias does not necessarily only occur during when you're choosing the sample they can even happen during the study duration now the interesting bit comes in when we talk about neiman bias because neiman bias happens at a very particular point So let's talk about Neiman bias. What is Neiman bias? So we'll take two examples. You want to do a study on the mortality of pr- prostate cancer. So prostate cancer is basically an indolent cancer. It does not grow very fast and and in a lot of people you might even die with it. So you look for prostate cancer patients and find out that most patients are alive and living with the cancer just like I said. So you know that the patients have great prognosis. but did you count all of the patient all of the patients and the people who died before this points due to late stage cancer right so this is the problem with neiman bias is that whenever you're at the assessment stage whenever you're at the counting stage of the developing outcome so you miss patients you miss patients who either who either recovered before or who just died before you're missing patients let's take another example to understand that even more you want to do a study on the mortality of atypical pneumonia in young adults you recruit young adults into the study who present with pneumonia like symptoms you do a chest x-ray and you diagnose with them diagnose them with atypical pneumonia you find the mortality to be higher than usual right you find the mortality to be higher than usual but you missed all the patients who recovered before getting admitted or be- before presenting to you in this clinic meaning most patients with atypical pneumonia or uh, urtis actually recover before even presenting to you in the clinic so you missed all of those patients and now you're calling this mortality or you're calling atypical pneumonia to be very very severe 
So that's the problem with Neiman bias. That's why Neiman bias is also called prevalence bias, meaning you look at only the people uh, in which the disease is prevalent right now, right now, meaning people who currently have the disease at this point in time. It's known as prevalence bias. It's also known as late look bias, meaning you missed all of the patients who recovered beforehand or who died beforehand. So that's another thing is survival bias. They're all names for Neiman bias, meaning you look at only the patients who still have the disease, you look at only the patients after a few have died and recovered and then you make your conclusion at a later point in time, so also called late look bias, or you look at only the survivors of disease. For example, if you want to see whether a cancer has good prognosis or a bad prognosis, and you look at only the patients who have survived this cancer, you call the prognosis to be great, but in fact you missed like 10, 20 people who died along the way. That's Neiman bias. And Neiman bias occurs at which stage? It occurs at the assessment stage. It occurs at the assessment stage. So how I remember Neiman bias because it has a very non-specific name and the name doesn't tell you anything. That's why I remember the other name for Neiman bias which is late look bias. You look at a time which is very very late, therefore you miss the patients who have recovered, you miss the patients who have died along the way and you're making your conclusion at a stage where you don't know a lot about people who died or who survived along the way. So that's Neiman bias. Now let us summarize all of what we learned in the takeaway from this lecture. So sampling bias means choosing the wrong sample, simple as that. Healthy worker effect is when you choose fit and healthy people. Why? Because that makes your sample different from the general population. That makes your sample different from the general population. Bergson bias, Bergson General Hospital. Choosing hospital patients makes your sample different from the general population. Attrition bias is when people leave your study and your sample becomes different. Non-response bias, meaning people did not, people did not respond to surveys and now somehow very few people who did and now this, the results are all skewed and very different and makes the result not representative of the general population. Neiman bias, people died or became better before you could assess them. Basically, you're, uh, you did not look at all the patients who died along the way and now you say that the survival is very good. So that's Neiman bias. In the end, Thank you so much for watching this video. This video is a part of our series on epidemiology and biostats. Be sure to check that out. Subscribe and thank you. Be proud of yourself.